Well, hey. Good evening, everyone. Oh, well, I've shared the screen, as you can see. And that's the ash tree that I want to talk about. On the edge of the, the long mend, it is sort of all the way along there. And I've walked down from here and going further down there. This was a walk on last Thursday. I've got more pics there and I'll be putting more up and talking about them because I think it's all rather important. But we sort of came round into this valley and looked to our right and whoa, there it was. It's an ash tree that's blown over. And we've had massive gales, as I think I've said, and it's been really, really, really strong, like 40, 50 mile an hour winds. And that ash tree went in those winds. Because we were down there not very long, two or three weeks ago, and it wasn't down. So, well, a few weeks ago, and it wasn't down. So it's come down in those winds. So, what was this about? I mean, is this a dead tree? Well, let's try again and get in a bit closer because I've got another photograph of this lovely ash tree. So let's see what we've got again and get there. Streamyard is a bit slow on this. I can't seem to dash from one to the other. So that's a close-up of ash tree. I didn't get that close. This was zoomed on the camera. But there we are. There's ash tree. And can I get this scene to move? Yes, I can. So there's ash tree. And a close-up of ash tree and ash trees very broken but is ash tree dead in the other picture that when you're looking further away there are a lot of branches going out quite a long way here's quite a big tree and when you look here you can see all these different stems coming out of him and look at all these roots. I mean, these roots are big. They've gone in a long way. Now, I don't know that you can see whether, what you know, but there's a bit of a giveaway of what sort of land it might be there. What's this? These are rushes, reeds, which means wet. And there is a stream actually between ash tree and the path that I was on. And it does get quite wet. That is two good things because the land is very, very rocky and stony on the mend. The rock is very, very close to the surface and doesn't necessarily hold water very well. But ash tree was very close to water. Roots easily get to water, so he was getting water all right. So, what happened? And is he dead? We'll come back to that. Well, he got blown and he got rocked about in the wind, but the roots haven't come up, see? He's broken in here. That looks like one of the heart places where he was broken. So what happened there? Well, as you know, trees get damaged and their bark is broken and sometimes ripped off in places by all sorts of things. It might be animals, it might be people, it might be wind, it might be rubbing two branches together like this or one branch against a trunk. And that can damage ash tree skin and then damage the sort of flesh, the tree flesh underneath. 
and even go down to the tree bones underneath. It's not quite like that, but we'll talk about it like that. So it's possible that there was a breaking here, or maybe even breaking higher up. Because when a tree gets broken like that, when something like that happens, then water can come in. Now, not only was it wind, it was raining. And I mean, it rains. It, we all know that. It rains a lot. <laughs> and so the water can come down, yeah, and down into any gaps. And like when there's a tree, you know, like this, with branches like this, and there's a gap, that is where water settles and bounces and you know how strong water is? It's just tap, 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 tap. And it can knock a building down. So it can knock a tree down. It can get inside a tree. And when it gets inside the tree, then the tree is weakened. And the tree can't necessarily mend itself. If that hole, that opening, say in a gap in the branches here, stays open and nothing can be done about it, then water is going to get in and it is going to damage and it will come right down. This is what I feel happened, is that it came down from somewhere like that and settled down here in the belly of the tree and then it just spread itself and softened itself and in a sense, killed the inside bits of the tree there so that they were weak, so that they couldn't hold the tree up. Okay, so possibly long rain damage, drip, 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 rain coming in, had weakened the inside of the tree here. And it just gets weaker and weaker and weaker, and then all of a sudden, it's too much. And the 50 mile an hour girls would just been having along with the driving rain. And it was just like, ugh. And this part of the tree has split. You can see that it's split apart. And it's fallen. It's fallen the way the wind would normally be going too, which is that way. <laughs> because of the way winds blow around us. So the wind has pushed it over. And as it fell, it broke open and it's showing its bones as well as its roots or his roots. Keeps on feeling like a he to me. He did when I was there. So what will happen now with him? What's going to happen? Is he going to die? Are the branches going to dry and rot? Or are they going to wet and rot? Um, are animals going to knock them over? I mean, there's quite a lot of sheep, unfortunately, on the mend. And they do a lot of damage because they're hungry. And there are too many of them and they're where they shouldn't be. And whether, are they going to hurt it? Are they going to kill it? Are they going to finish it off? Are they going to knock it over and brought it away? Have you seen trees? I'm sure you must have done. And they're sort of like and oak trees. Oak trees do it a lot, but other trees will do it. And so they put out a branch like this and it gets too heavy. And so they put their elbow down on the ground. And they prop themselves up on their elbows. It's exactly what it's called when you're talking, with tre talking about trees. And they prop the branch up putting their elbow on the ground. And what happens to that elbow bit that's on the ground? Have you noticed? Have you seen? Because quite often, the elbow bit will grow roots. The roots will come out. And so a new root system starts underneath the branch of the tree. And that feeds that branch and it can also, because it's still attached to this bit that's along, along the ground here, it can also feed that bit and anything that's coming up from that bit. So the tree props itself up. 
so that it can start putting fingers of branches and little twigs upwards towards the sun because that's what it wants to do it doesn't want to grow horizontal it wants to grow up to the sun all plants do and it's got another root system starting now it's quite likely that a lot of these branches will do that let's stop with this one for a minute and go back to the other tree da -de -da -de -da -de -da. we will get there honestly <laughs> let's go to the further away one and have a look at that okay so you can see there's a lot of them go right about them there's a branch right up there and these are high in the air and they'll have little buds along them along all these branches there will be little buds and more twigs which can become branches will grow upwards see this bit here is like an elbow on the ground yeah can i make this bigger for you too let's see if i can well i can i tried this before um so you can see this bit is on the ground here and so is this bit and this bit will be that's under the bracken and this bit is going into the ground too and that's actually going into the water in the ground as well and there'll be more of it over here and here so there are lots of these elbows propping up everywhere yeah and possibly making root systems that go down so that tree has actually got the opportunity to grow again and spread again these roots are still working because the soil is so thin and the rocks so close to the surface you do see them but they're still working and there's lots of little fibers going down there into the earth and picking up food and picking up water what else is the tree connecting to remember that thing called mycorrhiza the fungus the huge fungus array that should be all underneath this ground you won't necessarily see it on the top but there should be this whole spider's web this whole network of mycorrhiza under the ground there and the mycorrhiza connects between the various plants and it helps them all take food and water from the ground and give back their own nourishment and stuff to make the circle work on the ground completely in the ground completely get that right so is that a dead tree i don't know i suspect it may well not be i suspect that if i come back next year five years time i shall see new ash trees spreading out from there and spreading from all these branches so let's go in there again so it can spread from all of this area that we saw here and these will work still and be growing more leaves and what do they do when they grow more leaves when those branches grow more leaves they photosynthesize they do this totally incredible magic between water and sunlight and make food and make oxygen so that tree is not necessarily dead and very likely not dead either almost certainly not but how many people will think that it is dead oh look there's a dead tree instead of oh look there's a tree that's fallen over and maybe it's trying to live again and working on mending itself and putting itself back together and this is how it does that and you know people know that well most people seemingly nowadays don't if you've always lived in a city and you never go outside and you're used to trees looking like trees in a park or a garden you know a, a sort of prissy garden then that will be strange to you and it will look wild and unkempt and 
dying and damaged and frightening. Do you see that? It's like a skeleton, isn't he? He's like a weird insect, a weird creature, a weird, weird animal, or a weird, weird plant. But in that fear and in those feelings of weirdness and strangeness, and I think people don't altogether see this in themselves, is there's animation in that tree. That's why I'm afraid of it. It might get up on its legs and start walking around. It might do suddenly something strange. It might suddenly even stand up. I mean, <laughs> you know, there's enough video games now where that happens. <laughs> I suspect ash tree won't actually do that. But ash tree will grow, almost certainly will grow again. And so what appears dead isn't and will actually come back to life, maybe even more life. He may be even better than he was when he was what people think of as a nice straight trunk and nice branches doing all the right things, going out the right way in the right shape. And we think of that as life. But ash tree isn't like that, is he? Ash tree isn't like that. He's not a proper shape. He's huge and all over the place and very big. And there is this animation feeling that he is alive. And if he's alive, and because he looks weird, he doesn't look like we expect him to look, not like proper ash trees do. He frightens us because if he can look like that, then he can be strange and he can be different and he can do things that we don't expect. There's an awful lot in there. There really is an awful lot in there. Expectations, okay? Something isn't like what we expect, so it's not normal. And if it's not normal, it might have things in it that we don't know about, and we fear it, so it's almost certainly dangerous. And so we need to take it away, we need to clear up. It's a mess anyway, it looks awful, it's a mess. We need to clear it up, we need to clear up this part of the moor. What would happen if we do that? What would happen if we do that? If we, let me get this a bit bigger again. If we get all of this and we take it away from this patch. I mean, that looks sort of nice and green and it's it's sort of, sort of short. So somebody's been mowing it. Actually, it's the sheep and some deer have been mowing it and probably some rabbits. <laughs> Not the person with the lawnmower. And there's bracken, and the bracken's sort of a pretty colour. And there's a path down here, so, you know, actually he's in the way of the path. It's blocking the path. So it needs clearing up, because it doesn't look like what we expect. Because it doesn't look normal. Now, as some of you know, maybe lots of you know, on Sunday morning, um, I should be turned on from about a quarter to 10, but from 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, I'm doing a webinar called Rewilding Your Heart. Um, let's grab it a minute so that you've got it. And we can do this kind of thing, she says madly. So we've, I'll give you the link and I'll post the link into the comments here. So that if you want to come, there's still places, if you want to come, you can come. So there's the link. So let's do that a bit better. Rewilding 
your card. There we go. So if you want to come and talk, do more of it, I'm doing that. But when you, what I'm going to do there is actually talk about what rewilding your heart means. And I'm actually talking a bit about it now, aren't I? Because it's about how you feel with ash tree. Because ash tree's pretty amazing, really. Let's get there again. And ash tree really is quite amazing here. He's wild and he's living and he's broken and he's mending and he's dying and he's coming back to life. And he's doing things that you can't actually do because you can't photosynthesize. You haven't got all the right kit. You can't even put roots down into the ground like he can to eat and drink. You can't do things like putting your elbow on the ground and growing roots from it to prop yourself up and make yourself bigger. He's pretty amazing, isn't he? He can do all this stuff. And humans can't. We're not meant to. We're not trees. We don't do it that way. We do it different ways. We do things differently. But because he doesn't look like what we think he should look like, he scares us. So I'm going to talk about that quite a bit on Sunday and do exercises and a journey and story and stuff like that to help you get a hang on what is actually happening in your own head. And what's happening in your head is going to affect what happens in your heart. Because over the past thousands of years, actually, but certainly over the past 1,000, um, the last few hundred years, we are have been conditioned into think people, head people, head cases, not heart cases and not gut cases. Ash tree isn't like that. Ash tree is a gut person. Okay? He's a real gut person. He's actually working in here in his gut. And it's also his heart. And we actually call it that. When you're looking at this wood inside the, the trunk and the branches of a tree, that's called the heart wood. And it really is. It's also the part of the, one part of the wood that helps draw sap up and down, although there's other parts of it that do it right out at the edges as well. These trees are quite complicated beings, how they work. And so we're going to do this. We're going to talk about what heartwood is in our hearts. And, you know, is it wooden or is it flexible? Because the inside of ash tree is actually quite soft and flexible. Not, you know, tiddly widdly, like, you know, you wouldn't squeeze it quite like you do your fingers, but it is much softer. And then you feel the outside skin, and that's like, that's holding me safe. That's stopping too much rubbing and damage happening so that I won't fall off over too often. I'm going to talk about all that and how that works and how it works in us. And why am I going to do that? What's my big scene about that? Well, I can't remember one of the Indian chiefs was very good. Let me grab that one too. And I can give you what he says. I can get this up here. There we go, I think. Come on, diddly, diddly, diddly. Right. So, yes, it was Chief Dan George. And what he says is, if you talk to the animals, they will talk with you. And you will know each other. If you do not talk to them, you will not know them. And what you do not know, 
you will fear. And what you fear, you destroy. Uh, that is one of the most lovely and incredible quotes going. And it is so true. It's so utterly, utterly true, particularly of us now. You fear ash tree, okay? You fear ash tree. And you look at ash tree and he's frightening, he's scary, he's weird, he doesn't look right. So many people will come along and destroy him. When he's still alive, when he wants to live, when he's trying to live, and when, if left alone, he'd succeed in living because he's very good at it. Trees are a hell of a lot older species than humans and they are very good at being trees, much better at being trees than we are at being humans. So this is what we want to know. This is what we want to feel. This is what we want to play with. And we should be doing it all the time now because the only place we're going to make it and make changes and make things happen is not with governments and not with cops of 26, 27, 105, whatever it is now, not with big organisations even. Because all of those... You know what we do? And I bet you'll all sort of go, Rawr, if you realise it, is we give our power to them. They can do it. They'll help us. They'll sort it out for us. We can't do anything. We're just little people. So I've just <coughs> my own power, just like that. And I've gifted it to these people who probably don't have my sort of values and don't care about ash tree as I do and may not very likely don't not even know about ash tree as much as I do and I don't know that much not compared to real tree people and so we say oh please cop 26 please do it for us look we've walked all the way to Glasgow oh no, we, we're really poor we, we can't do it we really need you to do it Excuse me, I am going to say a rude word. Bollocks. We can do it. We can do it for ourselves. And what's even better is we can even work a bit like ash tree. Because here's, you know, the original ash seed that grew. And it grew lots and lots of big roots and became a great big fat tree because he was big. You can see that. And he grew lots and lots of branches and all this sort of thing. And then he fell over. He got blown over by a big wind and rotted away a bit inside by rain. So what does he do? He gets together with his branches and any branches he can get near the ground and they don't even actually have to touch the ground. They can send roots down from, you know, a little way away like this. Amazing, isn't it? Anyway, he gets together with all the other bits of himself and he makes himself new and different, very different to how he was before. Well, he will be. So what can we do? Well, we put down lots of big roots and we've got economies and governments and royal families and presidents and shit knows what. You know, all these great big things around us and big business and COP 2050. It's all gone wrong. We've been blown over. We're useless now. We're flat on the ground like this. So what Ashtree does is he goes to all his bits, all the bits of himself, and he asks them to root, and he asks them to grow, and they get together, each individual twig and branch, a little rootlet that comes off these branches. They get together and they, little bits like that, little cells, little tiny parts, they bring together a whole new tree that is quite different from the one that blew over. Are you seeing the analogies? It isn't 
you know, Kew Gardens or the Royal Horticultural Society or something that digs up all this mess, clears it all up and then plants a new ash tree. Not at all. It's the ash tree himself using his own little bits, keeping together with himself, talking with himself and getting himself back together. There's a couple of other things from that too, because do you remember just now I said, what's happening under all this ground? All this mycorrhizal network that connects between plants, plants of the same species, plants of other species, connects food and water. It's also communication for the plants. They talk through it. They exchange things through it. They really do. And, you know, it's like the wood wide web, as they say. <laughs> so he's not only even doing it to him, on himself. He's getting together with all the little people, all the little fungal threads that live here, and working with them. And they're not the same as him. They're even older than him. Fungi are from the oldest plant, oldest life forms, and we don't even know whether they're a plant or an animal, really. Some of the oldest life forms on Earth. I think virus are the only things that are older. But he's not saying, oh, you're a horrible fungi. I don't want you. He's saying, help, help me, reaching out his hands. And the fungus is going, oh, yeah, have some of this, mate. That's all right. So do you see what I'm saying again? It's the little people who will do it. The little people who do things like Incredible Edible is one of my favourites. Um, just up the road, there's Edible Wrexham. And this is where people, they see a bit of land that just gets mowed and doesn't get anything from the council. So they plant it full of vegetables or flowers. And those vegetables and flowers are free for anybody who wants to pick them as they go past. And they plant apple trees. And the apple tree, apples are free to anyone who goes past. So they're coming together. But it's the little people. It's not an organisation who sort of marshaled them all up there and took them out and said, you do that, you do that, you do that, you do that. They just did it of themselves. It's happening in other sorts of places where people are doing communal land work, communal land buying. And that's important too. But it isn't, so often it isn't the big people. That communal land buying still has problems because there is so much greed. And, you know, you've got Lord Fatars or whatever his name is, who owns sort of five million acres in whatever. And he'll sell you one million acres of it for a price. So you then have to scrabble around because you buy into what he says. You have to scrabble around and pull the money together to play his game. How wild is that? Hmm? How wild is that? How wild do you feel that in your heart or do you worry about it in your head? I think most people tend to worry about it in their heads. So, it's the little people who need to come together. And we're going to talk about and play with that on Sunday morning. And exercises, some proddy, proddy question exercises. So what do you think about this? You know, and then everybody comes back together. And, well, we thought so and so and so and so. Somebody else says, we thought so and so and so and so. So we're sort of practicing what I'm just saying. Put up an idea and then everybody come at it from their own direction and see what happens. And sometimes you also think, actually, that wasn't a good idea at all. And sometimes you think, ah, that's a really good idea. Let's play with that one. So this is what we're going to start playing with on Sunday. And it's so much about Dear Ash Tree. It's one of my favourite places to walk this valley. So I will be walking past him again and every few months and say, how are you doing? 
and particularly next spring when he's had plenty of time over the winter which looks all sort of dead and dour and it's not because there's so much going on under the ground here and I thought I should see what he's been doing under the ground and so what is going to spring up from him and that's partly why I thought of doing this first little introductory webinar in November so when still going down into the dark we don't come to the shortest day until the 20th 21st of december so we're still going down and in like he is like he's putting his roots down and then after the sun turns around starts getting higher and higher in the sky every day then he starts bringing up food and he starts putting up branches I'm going to go and see next spring. What have you done? Oh, look at all those branches. Look, you've got leaves here. You've got buds here. And I thought, well, maybe over the winter, till sort of next Denmark, February time, and we can start playing again. Because nobody has any time in December and January. December is just like frantic even with me and I keep my head down as much as I can and then January is getting over having been frantic so I have a couple of months break and cauldroning time because we'll all get ideas on Sunday morning what we might think what we might do and oh you know I said that I could say so, so, so. and then maybe we talk to each other on and off over the couple of months and it's all gone into our cauldron our real heart think, heart mind thinking cauldron, not the sort of one that does the arithmetic and worries about the bills. And see what we come up with by letting ourselves brew, because he's going to be letting himself brew. He's letting himself brew already. Let's do this, do this, we'll dive down there. But he's not worrying, not like people worry. He's just working slowly, step by step yeah and that's what we need to do we've left it very late but we've got to get on somehow and work it and do it so i think that's really all ash has got for us for today except he is wild at heart his broken heart is still wild his broken heart is still working, is still mending, is still growing and bringing himself to a new place, a new life. And that's exactly what we need to do. So I look forward to seeing some of you on Sunday. And the link's in the comments here, so that's fine. And now I'm going off to have a cup of tea and re-tea my heart let alone rewild it <laughs> but i'm gonna have, have a little break and a rest a cup of tea play with the cat who's feeling a little bit peeved today because she hasn't had enough of me because i've been rather busy and I might listen to some music and i should go to bed and have a read and i should get up all full of the joys of winter tomorrow morning and be off again but i look forward to seeing some of you hopefully as many as you like on sunday and we'll start talking about rewilding our hearts. So take care, everybody. And I'll see you next Monday anyway. And I hope I'll see some of you on Sunday as well. Bye for now.